depends on what type of boxes you're stacking. Um, three quarter bushel, half bushel, and bushel and a knife all stack exactly the same. You're going to have two rolls that's going to be this way. They're going to be three straight on your pallet. This row and then your middle row. And then your far side is going to be stacked long ways like this. And that'll be three, three, and then you'll have four long ways down the back side, which will give you 10 per layer. So then on your next layer, you flip it. You'll have three over top of your four here, three in the middle. Three's always stay in the middle. And then you'll come back down through here, four down this side. And that just flip flops each time which side the four is on to interlock. That's what you always need to make sure that you look at is how your buyer receives the product. If it's a 48 count, if it's a 40 count, 46 count, etc. And make sure that you comply with that. Uh, this is a pallet of half bushel boxes. Um, you can ship 80 to a pallet. Uh, one of the most important things to do when you're palletizing for shipping is to make sure you secure that bottom layer to the pallet. So you're going to take two wraps all the way around the pallet, securing it to the wooden part of the pallet, two full times, and then you're going to start working your way up. Once every seam of the if the pallet has got shrink wrapped around it, you're going to take two wraps around the top layer to secure it. And you're going to apply pressure and make this tear off so that's sticking to itself. And you're going to use your label. You're going to use your label on the front and on the back of the pallet because when you're cross docking, you're going to be bringing a pallet off the truck and then putting it back on the truck. So thus, when you're offloading, you're seeing this side, but the person that's getting ready to load will be seeing a blank side unless you label both sides of the pallet. So especially when cross docking or doing truck to truck, you always want to label where the product is going. And you do that front and back so there's never any question that somebody didn't see one side of the pallet. On some products where you have very tall pallets and you want to ensure that the corners are stabilized, Appalachian Harvest purchases corners to lock the whole middle layer into place. And you start with wrapping that middle part first just to hold your product, I mean the corners to the product boxes. Then you're going to take two good wraps around the bottom to make sure that your boxes are secure to that wooden pallet and then a wrap and a half all the way up to the top. The snugger the better because you have less likelihood of there being any shift during transportation. If your truck has to come to an immediate stop, it has to take a sharp turn, you won't have issues with it sliding left or right. These are broccoli boxes. They are not tied into each other. As you can see, they're stacked top to bottom. There are eight layers of six, so broccoli ships on a 48 count pallet. Cabbages are stacked on five per layer. They're interlocked all the way up. And the reason why you don't stack cabbage on an 80 count is because of weight. Because cabbage weighs 50 pounds per box. Um, the boxes are actually a bushel and an eighth, which are configured a little bit differently in order to hold the product such as cabbage. They are wax boxes. As you can see, Kevin's wrapping it really tight because there's a lot of weight and you don't want a lot of weight shifting left or right at all during your load because it could actually make your product inferior and not make it very delightful when the door is open at the fire's dock for them to see a big happy mess in the back of the truck. So wrapping it really tight all the way to the top. And as you can see, there's five per layer. We have two different types of uh, configurations we, we ship this in. Some buyers want them on 30s and some buyers want them on 35s. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, five layers of five, 25. The next uh, demonstration we're going to do um, is if you vent wrap product, vent wrapping is actually allowing your product to breathe and not securing the entire um, surface area with shrink wrap. So you're going to accomplish your first layer around the base of the palette and then you're going to start leaving some space and you're going to start turning your roll of shrink wrap to accomplish space. You're still securing your layers but you're leaving enough space for their air movement to get through. In the event um, your product temperature is a little bit warmer than you'd like to ship but you still have to ship it. Maybe the farmer didn't get it to the cooler in time. Uh, his post-harvest handling. Um, the core temperatures got a little bit warmer than you like. And the hydro cooler didn't have time to work before the truck had to leave with the order. So this is going to allow your product to A, be secured to the pallet during shipping, but it's also going to allow for breathability. And that way you don't build up condensation with temperature differentials. So we use the thermal blankets when we're transporting it. If we got broccoli and cabbage so we can keep the temperatures at, you know, 35, like broccoli and cabbage should be transported. We got cucumbers and peppers. We use those blankets to keep them, at, you know, in the 40s like they should be, mid 40s, to 46, 47. Um, that way the products are stored correctly. Humidity plays a big factor in broccoli and cabbage on storage 